Morning, traders and investors. Thanks for tuning in to Pre-Market Prep with Stock Odds. Why don't we take a look to see where the S&P futures are sitting. Uh, currently down about 0.1% at uh, 41.59. The dollar down, well, that dollar is actually up 0.6% at 101.87. Uh, bonds, that's down 0.8% at 129.20. Uh, crude, down another 0.8%. Let's see if the charts can actually load here. Uh, crude's at uh, 81.82. Gold also down about 0.8% at 1998, under that 2000 level again. Uh, silver, that's down 1.8% at uh, $25. And Bitcoin, that's down 3% at 29,427. So, Rob, how are you doing this morning? Not too bad. Not too bad. I'll share my screen here and um, go over a couple sure. of topics here, if you don't mind. Um, let's see here. There we go. Yeah, did you see the Charles Schwab earnings this morning? That's, yeah. It was quite the move. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just want to point out, this was our... Uh, Russell 2000 list, um, mm -hmm. point out specifically, you know, the lack of massive gaps. There was uh, uh, Rocket uh, Pharmaceuticals there had gapped up the most out of our list at 1.35%, but it built on that. And I don't know that that's an excessive amount as compared to the IWM. You, you know, yes, but, you know, it's not like paying up five or 10% for something, which puts a lot more risk on the table. Um, mm -hmm. But so, so a couple of things with when you're dealing with the Russell and the small caps is, you know, when you have large gaps, and especially when the stocks across the board are gapping up more than the index, um, that kind of puts you at a fairly high degree of risk. And much more requirement to move to beta hedged um, is, you know, not necessarily right out of the gate, but that is a consideration as well if it's things that are gapping a lot. Uh, when we open down, you don't necessarily want to move to uh, beta hedging right away because you want to allow for those stocks to have opened down more than the index and then have a chance to really rally and fill the gap and, and so on. And that will work for you. Yeah. Um, and and this case, is the case going long in the rest in these Russell tickers, right? Yeah. So uh, the, the difference between our Russell list that we produce and the S and P and the NASDAQ and other types of lists, five day and 20 day is those are all long, short balanced equal amount of symbols on the long side and short side, which again is not an argument for, optimized trading it's a representation of something that we can curate uh, and present in a in an efficient way i guess i mean 10 you know just the same thing as calling that hey these are our top 10 stocks well you know a trader might not want to mm -hmm. trade 10 they might want to trade 20 or might want to trade five you know i mean it's it doesn't mean 10 is the optimum number <laughs> it's just convenient <laughs> yeah for advertising yeah, exactly. and so on so yeah. the Russell is 20 stocks that are long against your choice of uh, hedging. And it's a very different market than, you know, dealing with the S&P 500 because of the nature of the stocks. I mean, first of all, there's small caps, you know, there's a, a growth appetite there uh, when it's warranted, when the sentiment's running high. There's also... Um, uh, you know, a volatility component, lack of liquidity uh, on some issues. Um, and they, they tend to be like very, very syncopated in their performance and possibly less mean reverting than uh, what we see in the S&P 500 and so on. Anyway, mm -hmm. this is the list. And you can see that the gap, you know, was is favorable for, uh, you know, starting out with just a straight hedged position without beta hedging. Um, and then, you know, the argument is if you can identify a risk on day that's beneficial to small caps, you know, you could even reel in a little bit of that hedge and let the stocks kind of breathe. Um, 
But you often get, you know, stocks on the list that, uh, you know, could be up or down, uh, you know, 10 or 20 percent. Edit here is uh, at uh, up 11.4 after the uh, open. So it's having a pretty good day. Uh, altogether, it is it is profitable. Um, and that and that's the other thing that we see a lot of times is that the the Russell list could have a very good day and the s p list is not right it, mm-hmm. it's often like that or the s p and the Nasdaq lists are having a great day and then the Russell's not so uh some of the subscribers they they take and they allocate a certain amount of capital to each type of market so that they're you know some days they're losing a little bit in one market but they're making it in the others um and you know it, it kind of mixes up all the time but it just gives a, a certain distribution and exposure so your exposure to small cap should be smaller based on the volatility and the type of finickiness that's in them versus uh maybe a greater exposure to the s p 500 which is a more sort of robust uh you know Li- highly liquid more forgiving market okay yeah Makes sense? yeah well yeah so often you know when you're talking about doing risk on versus risk off or determining a risk on day and and all that like the russell tends to you know be more of a risk on list and s p you know tends to be more risk off is that uh would you say that's right well not necessarily because the s p you know, is driven largely by the mega caps and the fangs and stuff like that. So you still have that same problem. And that is, um, mm-hmm. you know, like okay. on on uh, last week, right? We had the CPI numbers midweek and the mega caps, you know, launched favorably on the 830 news. And then from there, they sold off and kind of led the market down. So, so that driving force impacted, you know, the S and P 500. And then you end up having this bit of a rotation. It's like they, you know, sell the tax and whatever, and they rotate into, um, you know, into the defensive stuff more so. On Friday, we had J.P. Morgan as a massive driver of the money-centered banks. Didn't yep. didn't impact the regionals. To the same extent obviously it was more of the money center banks um and some other financials but uh insurance didn't really participate but you know uh, payment processors like visa mastercard participated uh, somewhat uh so you had a different driver a, a different engine and um you know the market uh, plays out that way and so the difference between like the NASDAQ and the uh, S&P is the NASDAQ doesn't have those financials in it, right? So it's more right. you know, more tech exposure. So each market is different. And I think my encouragement is to trade it appropriately. So how you would trade the Russell list would be different than how you would trade the uh, S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. So they're three distinctly different markets. And you know, we could have a Dow list too, and we tried that at one point, but it's very efficient. Like when the Dow components kind of expand, I mean, you're only dealing with 30 of them anyway, but when they when they expand, they tend to kind of, you know, retrace or there's that elasticity by the close. So it's extremely efficient from open to close. So um, not really that great of a a list. You're going to get more movement from the Nasdaq stock. Sometimes they really rip. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, in the Russell area, you know, like you get more movement. So so far, this list is uh, producing here. But I want to show you something about, like what we saw in gold uh, today. Uh, so okay, let's go yeah. to futures. So we had um, first of all the currency. You mentioned when you first came on there about the US dollar being up. So the US dollar dollar goes up, commodity comes down. (laughs) Yeah, the US dollar had a launch on Friday. So so again, we just because we see something, we still need to ask, what's the fundamental reason why? So Mm -hmm. they're factoring in more based on the recent economic data that the Fed is going to have to continue some form of a hiking pace that that may might not be the last one. So this is the tension. 
So uh, bond traders, uh, you know, have to factor things in uh, much more than equities. So that's why some of these leading indicators uh, are beneficial for us equity traders to watch, especially the U.S. dollar, uh, because some of the underlying commodities are impacted. Uh, that you know, if we're trading an oil stock, we still have to know what oil's doing. We still have to know what the dollar's doing. If we're trading a gold stock, we have to know what the dollar's doing. So part of, you know, part of success in trading is, you know, it's not fighting things that are, that are obvious. I mean, if you have a move in the dollar, it most likely will impact gold inversely and therefore the gold stocks. So for you to be looking to buy a dip, you know, it's not necessarily as good as selling a rally, you know, or just selling a, a, a support break or selling a previous close break or opening crossover move or whatever you do. But it would be, mm -hmm. hey, the dollar's a driver. It's impacting the commodities, uh, specifically gold. I'm going to work from the short side, you know, on the on the gold stocks. Okay, so that's what's one approach. Right. The other approach mm -hmm. is because go, because the dollar is moving and because gold is moving. So let's go to the metals here and look at gold for a second. You can see gold uh, selling off from that high. Um, Two thousand was a big number, and then we're just just slightly below it now. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So because that's moving, that means it's going to stir up the sector okay it's going to stir up the sector uh, and that could be good so you're introducing more volatility more um you know players have to make decisions and more people could be getting caught in something and you know you ends up breaking numbers so it could be a really good area to play in but you might not want to play in it directionally okay mm -hmm. so let's go to stock odd screener and say all right what i want to do today is let's see where's my where's my stock on screener here it was up here one sec i have to find it <laughs> yeah so I, i'm guessing where you're going with this is um you know if if gold is is on its move down you're looking for those stocks that are you know most i guess disadvantaged and, and more likely to you know head down um you know faster than uh, than others and then you're looking for then maybe some gold stocks that would uh, that would remain strong is that uh, yeah trying, actually, trying to anticipate yeah yeah here we'll go here um, so what we'll do is we'll we'll go in and we'll choose pairs and then we'll look at XLB components okay so now this is every symbol against XLB so mm -hmm. they're you know, they belong to that uh, ETF. You know, these are all uh, market cap weighted ETFs like the, uh, you know, sector uh, spider is as well. Um, so, you know, they're going to have a relationship based on their size and their relevance in the ETF as well. But, you know, what we're, we're simplifying things here in well, a big way is because we're comparing every symbol to the XLB. So you're working within right. that sector ETF, but you're you're analyzing things based on its performance relative to that ETF. And we know that that ETF is going to be statistically muted. So all we're asking for is what's some good long ideas versus short ideas. OK, so what we can do is is choose the pairs. Now, because there was a big move in the dollar on Friday which was up in reverse of what happened Wednesday, Thursday, even Tuesday, I believe. So, mm -hmm. so we had a distinct reversal of the dollar on Friday. Agreed? Yep. Yep. Okay. So then look what I'm choosing here. Move, open, close. So I want to know how things responded that day based on the dollar's move, based on you know, gold's move and some of the uh, impacted stocks within that group. 
I want to take that as one of my signals. Now I could line up the ducks. I could add additional signals, but I'm going to choose move open to close with open to close output for today. Okay. I'm going to choose pairs, USA feed and XLB components. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is curated from Friday for today's trading open to close. Uh, when you're doing, when you choose pairs, just you can take out the price range, uh, all the filters, and just let it come in as is. We still have five events minimum, so there should be nothing less than five events here, as you can see, plenty of events. So what are we analyzing for? We're analyzing the performance move in percent from Friday and how many times that same uh, bin has been achieved in the past of 2000 days and then we're looking at all of those events so in the case of praxair here we've got 22 yeah. events and you can drill down and you can see all of the events in the past that have happened it's this data that's going in to be used to create you know your averages and your sharp and your maximum favorable excursion adverse excursion and so on Okay, yeah, all those so good we can sort yeah. this by, you know, positive odds or uh, positive odds or, or negative odds or not negative, but less, less than 50. We can sort it by average performance. So what I did for this exercise is I chose average performance because you can have a, a situation where you have a positive odds over 50 but you actually have negative performance that just means in the samples that every time that it's sold off it's done so at a greater rate than when it's rallied and that's why you end up with an average that's negative even though you have positive odds so i like i like to sort by average performance we've talked about on the show about multiplying odds times average performance to have an expected value you can do mm -hmm. that as well um, yeah, and just, just to just, clarify, like when it, when it says you know average performance at the top there, you know 0. 0.44, that's the performance of going long CLF and short XLB, and then that's the that's the total performance of the pair. That's right? yeah. This is a that's a pair, and so for example, this last close price here is the ratio. Right. Right. So for example, if you uh, sort it by ratio, you could see that. Uh, these ones are all like, well, starting here, that this is a two for one relationship going to the other end. This means, you know, 3.5 of one to one of the other. So um, yeah. you can actually select stuff that would be closer in price just by sorting by the, the ratio if you wanted to. Okay. Because mm -hmm. this is the ratio of APD to XLB. Okay. But going okay. back to average performance sorting. So, these would be a lot of my long candidates that I would want to look at. So what I'm going to do is select stuff that might be more sensitive to the dollar. Okay. Because Friday's move was about the dollar in, in this regard of what we're looking at. And today we had the dollar showing strong before the market even opened. So I could assume that how things behaved on Friday might be a continuation for today. Okay, based on the move open close. So that's why I'm looking for candidates that have the potential to rally today as my longs. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, I want to hedge it because I don't want to be exposed to if the US dollar changes its mind and decides it's doing something different. And I don't want to be exposed to gold then reversing and impacting basic materials and basic materials group decides to do something different. I want it to be a theme where the dollar was the driver on Friday for these, this group, and it's a driver again today, but I don't want a direction. I just want the pot stirred up. I just want volatility. I just want movement. I don't want it to be a wet dish rag laying there doing nothing. I want to make some money. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Volatility money, is great for trading. That's for sure. Yeah, it is. That's the whole thing. You you first want predictability, and then you want volatility. You can't have it in the other way around. You have to first have your predictability. What's our predictability? 
I've got plenty of events where this has happened in the last 2000 day look back period. And I have my odds and average performance from all of those events. So I'm a statistically driven model here. Okay. Now, let's pull it into a spreadsheet here. So you can export easily. So I did that. So what I did, just so you know, I chose things that might be more sensitive to, to the dollar. I did not choose them based on how they were performing. I just looked and said, okay, ATI, more metals, Newmont, more metals, Alcoa, more metals, Nucor, more metals, FCX, more metals. Okay, so that's how so, it was chosen. Uh, okay, okay. So, so by more sensitive to the dollar, you're just looking for ones with, you know, larger commodity it's, exposure like the... Well, metals. I mean, okay, you've got you've got... In basic materials group, you've got some weird things too. You've got packaging, like cardboard and plastic. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm just saying that I chose because when the dollar moves, the metals are more inversely related to the dollar than anything else. Right. Okay. So I'm choosing things that are maybe more sensitive because they're more metal associated. That's all. Okay. So yeah. on the other okay. side of the coin here, flip, flipping the average performance the other way, Cliff, X, CF, uh, Dow. Um, let's see what else I chose. Yeah, yeah, let's so take those, those ones are more sensitive. So I chose five, five from the other side and five from that side. Again, not checking performance first. This is this, I just happened to export this literally one minute before I jumped on the show here. So that's how <laughs> you, can, you can export it. And I just colored it. Here's how it worked. So, so okay. these are the longs chosen from that list. And this is the change from the open because we're trading open to close. So that's where we're basing our performance. So if you take a look at the average performance of those, it's 0.43. And these same thing averaging so we're short these ones in red and we're long these ones in green so we get to add that performance and that performance in terms of turning that into a positive number because we're short these so so far you know we're talking about 0.67 return on capital which is which is reasonable it's good it's above mm -hmm. benchmark right yeah that is um, pretty good and this yeah. is not taking a direction on gold this is not taking a direction on the dollar. This is just saying, and this is kind of the emphasis that I, I, I was trying to get to in the oil example that we examined um, a couple Mondays ago when we had the uh, OPEC cut and oil was up 6%. And taking that opportunity to go, oil is a driver. So let's not, take aside let's just utilize that driver that event uh, and go grab our statistical trades because how do you know which ones to buy and how do you know which ones to sell you don't have enough time to do a deep dive because that just happened that uh, you know over the weekend and in, into the morning so maybe you have an hour to prepare before the open it's not a lot of time to figure out every single correlation and fundamentals and all that kind of stuff so yep. the approach was just going into the database and grabbing from the oil sector. In that case, it was going to the screener and choosing the um, S&P 1500 uh, energy sector. Okay. And so the longs and shorts came from that sector. In this case, we're going into the symbols versus the XLB. Right. So they're all mm -hmm. all uh, analyzed in their relationship to the sector ETF itself. So, this is, again, different ways to approach it. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and this so these are just the long these are just the longs minutes. from here. Sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead. Well, uh, oh, the, I mean, of course, you're accustomed to using all this data. But, you know, this takes you in the morning, uh, you know, five minutes to get together this list, something like that. Well, yeah, I mean, I was on a phone call, as I mentioned to you before I jumped on the show here. So literally, mm -hmm. 
uh, this was in under five minutes. I mean, that, you know, to come up with some ideas to, to trade with here, um, this, I'm, I'm showing you an example based on a catalyst. The mm -hmm. catalyst is the dollar. It's going to impact a sector. Within that sector, there's going to be stocks that are more related to the catalyst than others. So all I did is select some of those from the long side and some from the short side that are more related to that catalyst. Right. I find that the statistics really benefit people when you're having uh, to, to deal with this kind of thing and you don't want to take direction. Like the other option is at, in the morning, you would have had to say, okay, well, the dollar's up, gold's down, but I think it's going to reverse. Okay, now you're at risk. Or I think it's going to continue and you're taking trades according to that, you're at risk. This approach is we understand the driver. Mm -hmm. We know it's going to impact some of these things. So it's going to stir the pot up. So all I want is my statistical reference for which stocks I want long and which I want short. Put them on together in equal capital and let the market take care of you. Let it let mm -hmm. the market do your heavy lifting for you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyway, you can explore some of this for yourself. I mean, the same would apply if you had, you know, uh, a driver, let's say, you know, we've talked about the oil driver already, uh, the dollar driver. Um, you might have, you know, you might have a huge move in the bonds and you're going to have utilities going to be impacted. Financials could be impacted. REITs could be impacted. So, you know, it, it's something different every day. But this approach, almost anybody can do. And what it does is it really strips out that directional risk and lowers the variance. Mm -hmm. And you're profiting from the relative performance between the long dollars applied to the long symbols that you've chosen and the short dollars applied to the short symbols that you've chosen. And it's about that relative performance. That's all it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can so we have, code if you want. Yeah. I, well, I was just thinking, so there's, it's a big earnings week. You know, we have bank of America, Goldman Sachs tomorrow and we got Netflix and, uh, and Tesla on Wednesday. Uh, or net Netflix on Tuesday. So, you know, if you were looking, you know, ahead of time to create some ideas, say, say for the, you know, more banks that are releasing their earnings, um, you know, what would be your approach to to doing that? Would you look at the pairs, um, you know, in the stock odds database uh, versus the XLF um, to get some ideas? Yeah, you could, you could do that. You could look through the, uh, sector i mean it's it's a little bit different for earnings in the sense of you have to think about the sympathy plays and also the difference between um the money centered banks and and the regionals like so for example on friday even though we had jp morgan up over seven percent um you know the re some of the regionals you know sold off i mean it was a big difference in that mm -hmm. they didn't participate but you could have a situation this week uh where a bank reports earnings and you know all the regionals decide to participate and go me too me too so it's a little bit trickier with earnings events than it is with a macro catalyst like the dollar like a rise in volatility like um uh you know the bonds moving you know affecting interest rates of course so yeah. uh, a little bit different that way than than the earnings thing. So, um, but you know that being said, yeah, I mean you could you could certainly still take the same approach, and that is um, if things are gapping up significantly in the morning related to the banks um, because of an earnings event, you still don't want to be paying up for your longs. If you're not also selling stuff at a premium, see, that's where the safety net comes in, mm -hmm. right? It's like, yeah, okay, bond, our, our banks are doing great and they should continue. Okay, that's speculation. Um, but I got to pay up for them if I want to get in. Well, that's risk. Well, if I can 
pay up for some that are advantaged to go to, to go long, and I can short some at a premium that are advantaged to be short. Uh, it's just a be much better mix. So you yeah. can still apply this same approach that I'm showing on the screen here. You can apply that to anything, almost any time. I think where it tends to work better is more on a macro view than it is on any one symbol just reporting earnings. Okay. 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 Well, yeah. Thanks, Rob. Um, before everybody goes, I have a couple of uh, programming notes here. Uh, I'll just uh, stop screen share. Um, futures actually just uh, just broke to the downside, but it's bouncing back up. So we're still sitting pretty flat on the session. Um, so for, for programming, uh, both Joel and I will be out uh, until Thursday this week. So there'll be no uh, closing print today or Tuesday or Wednesday, but uh, all the shows will be resuming uh, this Thursday, the 20th. Um, sure. And then, yeah, if you're if you're looking for earnings, the yeah big ones, you know, Bank of America, Johnson and Johnson tomorrow, Goldman Sachs and Netflix and United. And then, yeah, Tesla Wednesday is a big one. TSMC on Thursday. And yeah, it's a really big week for earnings. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Well, thanks okay. for joining us, everybody. And uh, we'll uh, we'll talk to you again later. See you on Thursday.